Okay, thanks, Miles. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thanks for being with us on this beautiful spring day. I can't believe it's already May 12th. Um, a lot of good news report. Uh, obviously, uh, the thing that uh, we're so happy about right now uh, is being in the yellow tier, moving through the tiers, and finally getting to yellow, a, a space we have never been in before. Uh, and it's really a tribute to everyone adhering to the guidelines and uh, um, the vaccination rollout and all those folks that have rolled up their sleeve and uh, received that vaccination uh, already. But uh, this is not a time to, uh, to claim victory over COVID-19. We still have a long ways to go. Uh, we still have uh, um, COVID out there, we know, uh, with, uh, I'll report, uh, with 12 hospitals or 18 uh, hospitalizations. That's up from uh, the last time we spoke. Um, but it's a time that uh, we can say we're headed in the right direction and we're asking uh, everyone uh, to please get vaccinated. Um, the, the one thing that, that uh, is, is new to report is it appears that we have no new reports of, of a, a death over the last um, two week period due to COVID-19. That is something that we were hoping to report for a long period of time. We hope that we've reported on our last death attributed to COVID-19 and that this trend continues. Um, one of the things that was really instrumental in getting us to, uh, to the stage where today, the yellow, uh, was the testing. And that testing strategy that we put in place to continue uh, doing that at a high level and, uh, and making it easily accessible throughout the county has paid off because that has allowed us uh, to uh, get to the adjusted positivity rate that we're at today. We are currently third in the state in testing at 109, and we fluctuate between um, uh, first and third. At a, so we're at 109 per 100,000 population. And of course, we still say that it's important to get tested for that very reason, so that we stay um, in that, uh, get the credit for that adjusted rate. Uh, and we understand the variants out there, and we continue to contact trace if uh, someone does uh, in fact uh, COVID-19. So current testing sites, just to give you an idea of where we're at, and these are running multiple days throughout the county. We're in Daly City District uh, Admin Offices, East Palo Alto, Nordstrom's Rack, the Redwood City, North Fair Oaks, um, uh, the Redwood City, Red Morton Park, San Mateo College of San Mateo, South San Francisco uh, Unified School District, and then one day a week we're at the North, uh, at the Bayshore School in Daly City in Half Moon Bay at the Community Center in Menlo Park, the Aneta Harris Community Center, Pacifica City Parking Lot, Redwood City North Fair Oaks Library, Redwood City St. Francis Community Garden, and San Mateo Central Courthouse area. So that is uh, amazing the amount of testing we still have there. And that was part of the strategy to help uh, get us into uh, the yellow tier, which has uh, of course paid off. Uh, so we talked about the blueprint to, to a safer economy, the fact that we moved into a yellow tier, but I just want to reflect upon how far we have come uh, in this journey to get to the yellow tier, the least restrictive tier. Um, today, we sit at 1.8 uh, as the adjusted case rate, uh, which puts us, of course, in the yellow tier because you have to be 1.9 or below. But a mere uh, five months ago, on December 12th, we were at 36.3 uh, in the purple tier, on that adjusted case rate, 36.3 down to 1.8. On the unadjusted case rate, uh, we're at uh, 3.4. Uh, and we were at uh, that time in January on the, the 19th at 62.9 per 100,000. Positivity rate is 0.6 right now. And uh, in uh, January, uh, January 12th was 8.4, again, in the purple tier. And then the health equity metric, um, was uh, it is today 1.3 in the yellow tier and was on uh, January 12th at 14.1. So some of the things that come with the advantage of being in the yellow tier and uh, of course the second in the Bay Area, uh, outdoor gatherings, maximum of 100 people, outdoor private events, the maximum of 200 people or 400 people if all the guests are tested or show proof of full vaccination. Indoor private events, maximum of 200 people if all uh, guests are tested or show proof of full vaccination. Um, and uh, one of the things that uh, you know we're also here to say is that we certainly have enough vaccine for, for those 16 and above. 
Um, and, and, and actually we have a surplus of vaccine for the first time. Uh, so we're encouraging everyone, there is no waiting. This is the time to get vaccinated. Uh, and as indicated earlier, <laughs> vaccination rates, uh, hospitalization rates remain low. Um, the county uh, has also aligned uh, with uh, the uh, state guidance on mask guidelines. And so yesterday, Dr. Scott Morrow rescinded his June 17, 2020 order for social distancing and guidelines and face coverings requirements in favor of the state guidance. This has been in fact for almost a year now. And so the move allows uh, for the county to align with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in California Department of Public Health. The CDPH issued a guidance for the use of face coverings on May 3rd, which in summary states, for fully vaccinated persons, face coverings are not required. Again, are not required outdoors, except when attending crowded events, such as live performances, parades, fair festivals, sporting events, or other similar uh, outdoor settings. And for unvaccinated persons, face coverings are still required for outdoors. Uh, anytime physical distancing cannot be maintained, including when attending crowded outdoor events, such as live performances, parades, fairs, festivals, sporting events, and indoor settings outside of one's home, uh, including public transportation, faith coverings, uh, continue to be required regardless of uh, vaccination status with certain exceptions. So the moral of the story here is there uh, comes with uh, vaccinations more freedom in regard to uh, face coverings and, and the ability to gather. So we are encouraging everyone to do it, uh, to, to get vaccinated with uh, the caveat that uh, we have this social contract that we have relied upon. And I think to a great extent that has what has allowed us to move through the tier system here, that we are respectful of one another. Uh, and that as we do approach people uh, in a park or, uh, or outside someplace that we will cover up or for waiting in line, we will cover up with a face uh, covering um, just uh, so uh, we can move uh, into this in a, um, in a, in a, in a orderly manner without just ripping off the banner and saying, hey, you're free to uh, go about where, uh, without a mask. Uh, we just want people to adhere to that social contract and, and still be respectful of others, not knowing if they're vaccinated or unvaccinated, and uh, always have that mask with you because uh, you never know when you're going to need it. So uh, in, in regard to a vaccination, um, Pfizer vaccine received FDA approval for use in 12 to 15 year olds. Uh, we understand just recently there has been um, the uh, CDC advisory group on immunization practices uh, has met and approved it. And we're waiting for the Western States Scientific Review Committee to meet, which uh, may meet today. If in fact uh, it is approved uh, through the Western States uh, Scientific Review, we are poised to immediately start uh, accepting um, those 12 to 15. We uh, are also poised to uh, have mass vaccination clinics next week, Tuesday and Wednesday at the event center to handle uh, the increased volume. We believe just about 40,000 kids to fit in that criteria in the county. And we will start immediately vaccinating them also. Um, so the California Immunization Registry uh, data as of 510 showed 490,461 individuals vaccinated with 813,830 doses about a 76.4% total of eligible county adult populations um, as of right now. And that's 16 above. Obviously that will change if in fact uh, 12 and above are authorized. Uh, we've also reached 64% of the eligible adults in our lowest HPI index census tract, which is something that we've been striving for. And then we can see from the data dashboard that 117,000 residents 65 and older have been vaccinated so far and uh, 51,000 residents 75 and older have been vaccinated. We also see that we've reached 56.4% 56, 56 of eligible adults in our lowest um, uh, criteria, and our vaccinations have reached 54.2 people of color, 38.6% people, 38.6% uh, of uh, white individuals, and 7.2% of unknown. So the San Mateo a Medical Center continues to use the HR SA supply of vaccine. Uh, and uh, we've got great support uh, from the hospitals, Daily C, the Fair Oaks uh, Clinic, 
uh, and other. So right now, uh, with our vendor HR um, supply, the supply of vaccine is really not a question. So again, we will look uh, next week, Tuesday and Wednesday, to do mass vaccinations of those uh, 12 to 15, if in fact it is approved and uh, we expect it to. Uh, community vaccines still continue to thrive. Uh, in Daly City, uh, 321 over a two-day period. Um, San Mateo had 489 at the San Mateo High School. Um, we, uh, in regards to those community uh, locations, uh, over 1,257 first doses at these seven sites and second doses, 325. We're additionally reaching out to the homeless uh, and uh, we continue our partnership with Stanford, who's really taken on uh, the East Palo Alto segment of this. We are also focused on the homebound with um, uh, a great deal of those already uh, taken care of. Uh, we have um, also long-term care facilities that uh, we've been focused on and the majority of them have been taken care of. And then our federal pharmacy partnerships continue to thrive in this county in many pharmacies. Uh, in regard to the uh, vaccine equity progress, as I mentioned before, we're making great progress there. We're opening up evening clinics in East Palo Alto for those who can't make it during the day or on weekends. So we just wanna to try to cover every base possible. Um, and now all county uh, operated clinics are on my turn. So if you want an appointment, go to my turn. If you uh, have not, if you're driving by a clinic and you happen to see a sign, you can just stop in and we'll register you there. Um, we've also uh, pivoted and uh, we're going to, uh, to micro sites now. Uh, and, and having micro events uh, based on uh, specific at-risk communities in the high, uh, uh, as identified by the health data. Um, such include uh, churches of worship, apartment complexes, employment centers. So we're really getting that down to a micro level to try to make sure that everyone has the opportunity um, to get vaccinated. In regard to the emergency rental assistance program, I'll give you some numbers. We still have a lot of capacity here, a lot of money available, and we want people to avail themselves of this. Uh, we've uh, applications uh, in, in uh, progress right now are 923. Total active cases are 1,515. Uh, total funds requested on those applications are 19.9 million. We've got about 70 million to give out. So we've got a long ways to go, a lot of money to give out. Um, but total funds approved are 4.9 uh, million so far and total funds that have been distributed, $314,000. Uh, uh, the state has retained a firm called Urban Footprint to conduct an analysis on the state and regional eviction risk. And uh, you know, I'll cut to the chase here. The, the risk is significant um, uh, in regard to the housing front. Uh, so we have uh, 844,000 uh, households uh, with throughout California that are at risk of, uh, of eviction, Nine, uh, just about 100,000 in the Bay Area. But more importantly, in San Mateo County, uh, 10,580 households are at risk of eviction, which would be a catastrophe, obviously, for this county. The total monthly rent gap is about $26 million. The median gross rent, I mean, this is astonishing, $2,460, the highest of any Bay Area County. Um, so we do have uh, a lot of funding available for these, and we believe that there will be more information coming out of uh, the state, uh, the governor's office uh, by Friday uh, with some changes to the program that will streamline the program and uh, really make a difference in paying off uh, this debt for many, many people. Um, we are getting a message out there uh, any way we can to landlords and tenants. Uh, housing is key.com is the website. We're out there with flyers in many languages, and, and we encourage people to go to the core agencies and get information um, in regard to how they can uh, uh, arrest that, uh, that uh, debt uh, in regard to housing. So, um, in regard to uh, the restaurant revitalization fund flyers, um, emergency assistance is now available to eligible restaurants, bars, and other qualifying food businesses through the restaurant revitalization fund. Grants are be, being made on a rolling basis, and we're now in the midst of a 21-day priority period for women and, and veteran-owned or economically or socially disadvantaged-owned businesses. 
The county is partnering with Sam Cedar, who's done a wonderful job. The Peninsula Chinese Business Association, Environmental Innovations and Renaissance Entrepreneurship Program to support businesses all the way through the application process. We are going door to door to try to spread the word on this. And we are sharing uh, flyers with the, the restaurants uh, and, uh, and out there in many different languages. In regard to the Great Plates program, happy report has been extended to uh, June 7th. Uh, again, uh, it's just a, such a terrific program, 4,557 participants, uh, over uh, 2.3 million meals served, 84 active restaurants, uh, and a lot of people being fed. Uh, just a, a quick milestone that our, um, our um, outreach efforts by Community Affairs has really paid off 40,000 masks to date have been distributed. Just an, an incredible uh, opportunity uh, to get the masks out and, and interact with people, encourage them to get vaccinated. And uh, the Office of Community Affairs has done a wonderful job. They're out there promoting the clinics and uh, doing a great job of that. Uh, and they will be uh, conducting more outreach uh, if uh, the vaccine expansion takes place, 12 to 15 year olds. Um, so they're working with the school districts and others to get that word out. So um, a lot of positive information coming out uh, right now from the state, from the feds, as far as uh, financial support. Uh, we're moving into, we moved into the yellow tier. Uh, all things are looking like they're headed in the right direction right now. So overall, a very good uh, last couple of weeks. And with that, Miles, let's go ahead and see if there's any questions. Great, so if you have any questions, please go ahead and raise your hand or type them into the chat. Um, I'll start with the two raised hands right now. We'll start with Sarah and then Henrietta, and then we'll get to Sierra's question that's been typed out. Sarah, how are you? I'm good. Thanks so much. How are you? Wonderful. Thanks. Great. Um, so for the vaccine for 12 to 15 year olds, does the county have any plans to coordinate with schools or even go into schools uh, to get those vaccines in arms? Well, we're going to definitely coordinate with schools and, and we hope that, you know, if the parents haven't been, act, been vaccinated, they will be with, with those kids. Um, but we are going to start uh, very early uh, as soon as, uh, as, soon as uh, we get the word that we can proceed uh, as early as this weekend, vaccinating people. And then we have the mass vax uh, nation uh, centers open next week at the event center. And Sarija, um, do you want to talk a little bit about more specifics with the coordination of the schools? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've really continued to partner closely through the County Office of Education, the leadership of Superintendent McGee, and um, a lot of helpful feedback from the school superintendents and what is going to be the most, what are the best pathways, what are the most trustful pathways. We have two regular weekly clinics that are on school campuses, the Cesar Chavez Middle School uh, in East Palo Alto, as well as San Mateo High School. And we also know that pediatricians really want to see young people back, you know, at, in their pediatric practices. A lot of people um, put off uh, visiting their doctor over the course of the last several months and pediatricians are uh, wanting to make sure that things are going okay and kids are up to date on all other um, health issues, immunizations, et cetera. With Superintendent McGee's partnership and the work with other um, schools, we may add to school-based vaccination clinics and other locations. Some schools are also pursuing opportunities that come their way to do that in you know, juggling their calendars. So we want to keep learning as to what are the best ways to reach young people and their families. We hope the 12 to 15 uh, youngsters and the 16 and 17 year olds can also help promote um, vaccine to other family members and are looking forward to you know, reaching even more people as we have more eligible. Great, thank you. And then um, related to that, what kind of parental consent will kids need to provide when they get their vaccines? Yeah, there is a parental consent process that's built into the MyTurn um, system to answer a few questions. And there's also a specific um, uh, path. A 12 year old, I don't believe is able to sign off for themselves. So the parent needs to sign off on the MyTurn registration. and Pediatric practices are very used to working with parents trustfully on the consent issues, making sure there's informed consent and understanding, um, you know, and responding to any questions that a parent or their youngster might have. 
Okay. Thanks. And then I just had I just had one more question. Sorry um, about the uh, rental emergency rental assistance. Um, what are some of the barriers to getting that money to the people who need it? Um, no, now that we know just how big the the need is here, um, what might be built into that program that is making it difficult for people to access? Well, I think part of it um, is is uh, just making people aware of it. Number one. Um, and then there's the 20% reduction by uh, landlords that is necessary to access it. That may be changing, and we're we're anxiously awaiting the uh, some uh, news from the governor's office to see if that does in fact change to make it more inviting for landlords. Uh, to me, it's a no-brainer. I mean, it really, um, you get this money up front. It's very quick process, or a relatively quick process, uh, and it's guaranteed. So uh, as opposed to to uh, you know, not having it guaranteed. So um, I think that it's it's twofold, and uh, I think it's really uh, we're trying to to utilize every process possible to get the word out that this funding is available, and uh, and we've got a lot of money here to distribute. Great, thank you. Uh, thanks, next, Sarah. Next up, we've got Henrietta, and then we'll do Sierra's question that got listed down, and then I saw Astrid raise her hand, and I think that's what we'll have time for today. Okay. Uh, okay, Henrietta. Yes, thank you. Uh, while the statistics in terms of COVID-19 infections are looking good, some medical experts are warning that uh, there might be a surge in COVID cases because of the mutations and considering what's happening in India, which that was looking very good too, um, would it not be warranted perhaps to be more cautious in all of the reopenings now? Well, I think that we're espousing exactly that, Henrietta, that, that even though we are opening and uh, more people are going back to work, we have not beat COVID-19. We have 76.4%, I think the last time I checked, uh, people in this county who have received at least one vaccine that you know that's not two vaccines and that's certainly not the population the, the remaining population out there so your point is well taken in that we're saying that at this point in time we have not beat COVID-19 it is out there and that's why this social contract is so important for people to continue to take precautions we are loosening a little bit at a time um, and opening a little bit more at a time but it's still out there. It's still necessary to, uh, to have your guard up and to do the, the reasonable things that are necessary to get us to the finish line here. And I think that in large part, that is why we're here today in the yellow tier, the second in the Bay Area, one of the few in the state, because people in this county have taken those precautions and heeded the advice of help um, and, um, and really done what, what is necessary to protect themselves and others, especially uh, their loved ones. So um, we hope and we encourage everyone to continue in that vein. Well, given that, um, is the county prepared just in case there might be a surge coming in, in the coming months? Yeah, I mean, I think Dr. Morrow has been very clear that for now, uh, you know, we have uh, lifted those guidelines that have been placed since June of last year. Um, that could change if, if, if the situation changed. This is still very fluid and, and I would, you know, it looks like by all accounts, we're headed in the right direction, but health is poised and Dr. Morrow is certainly poised to, to make any changes necessary to protect the health and safety of, uh, of our county residents. So we hope that doesn't occur, but if it does, we'll, we'll pivot and, and make changes as necessary. Thank you. Sarita, anything to add to that? I think you covered it. We do urge the public if there has been any potential exposure, testing is still you know, widely available and we wanna keep making that accessible. And we hope that with continued vaccine reach, that's fewer and fewer hosts for the variants of the virus to reach. So with the vaccine now more predictable and available, um, you know, just gotta stay steady <laughs> as, as we get through. Right. Okay, Miles, who do we have next? Great, now we have a written question from Sierra. Uh, looking at the county vaccine dashboard, it appears as if the number of vaccines being administered starts to trail after peaking in April. Uh, 
Is this an accurate assessment? And if so, is this due to vaccine hesitancy, interest concentrated on one vaccine product specifically, whose supplies may be limited, or a different explanation? You know, I, I'll give you my take and then turn it over to Sarija that, uh, that, yeah, I mean, certainly the, the numbers, we're not seeing the numbers that we did in April, especially at our mass vac site. I think we had just over 300 there uh, at, at the last max uh, vac we had yesterday, the day before. Um, and we have, you know, a good portion of the adult population uh, that has received a, a vaccine. But I, I think that um, there is a portion of, of the population now that's experiencing uh, this dilemma, whether they should get vaccinated or, or, or not. Um, you can see the numbers, how many people have. It's safe. Uh, it's it's uh, widely available now. And maybe some people were waiting or thought they couldn't wait in lines or, or didn't have the time to wait in line. And now it's widely available. So uh, that is a word that we continue to spread. Uh, and you know the way that, that we really address these variants is have more and more people get vaccinated so it can't spread and we can't uh, we won't see the widespread of, of those variants um but Sarita, you might might have more to add to that yeah um you know the pace of the uptake is not as steep so there are many people who are really eager and really waiting for when can the vaccine be available to me and when we didn't have enough supply we saw a very quick uh, uptake and really grateful to every resident that you know was patient enough when they were ready and the vaccine supply wasn't available to them. We always expected that getting to the um, population for whom there's not as much flexibility in, in people's schedules, there are caregiving responsibilities that require planning ahead, there are other barriers that have to be removed to make it easy enough to get vaccinated and I think that is the period we are in. There also are people who have questions that haven't been answered, are waiting to see how things play out for a family member or getting more advice from their doctor. Um, we know that many people want to make sure they get their questions answered, and that's very understandable. And so we do think this next phase will take longer to get to the same number of, you know, the 24% who are have not availed themselves of the vaccine yet. We, we expect it to take longer and we expect to keep learning what is it going to take to remove barriers, to get questions answered, to give confidence and trust um, in the safe vaccines that are available. And, you know, we'll keep learning. Great. Right. Astrid. Hi, hi, Mike and Srija. Um, quick question about, so for the businesses that are allowed to expand capacity if people have been fully vaccinated. Does the county have like best practices or something like that for how people can check vaccine status? Is that something that's in the works? Um, so the businesses uh, that can expand, I mean, there's there's numerous, numerous ones. I mean, most notably um, the, the bars can open inside now that uh, are not serving food to 25% capacity. But there's different capacity levels from theaters to amusement parks to restaurants, everything else that, that moves also. And I would encourage you, Astrid, to go to the website to get a comprehensive view of that. It's really broken down very nicely on the state's uh, website for the yellow tier. And then, um, I, Sarija, I'll let you answer the question about the, uh, the vaccine. I think, um, Astrid, for your question about verifying vaccine completion or you know considerations of a vaccine passport or how to verify that is not something that the county is envisioning playing a role in there is conversation at federal and state levels of what are the tools that could be used um, when entities seek to require vaccination or seek to avail themselves of you know whether it's a capacity privilege or something else and we would not expect that to be done at a county by county level Okay, thank you. Okay, any more questions? All right, uh, thank you all for being with us here today. I just wanna uh, say that, you know, we've thoroughly enjoyed um, uh, interacting with all of you and we're looking to probably end this uh, June 9th. So two more sessions, we're gonna go about another month uh, and, uh, and then we hope uh, that as the state lifts um, uh, or, or reduce their, their uh, or as we open more as a county and as a state, that we will get back to normal more uh, as a county government 
and uh, we won't be doing these meetings uh, after that. So of course, we'll still be available for any questions, uh, but we won't have the regularly scheduled um, time with the uh, with all of you. So uh, I just really appreciate all of you. So we'll, we'll do two more, uh, two weeks from now, and then May 9th, and then we will call it a day. We've been at it for over a year now, and it's probably time then. So thank you all. Have a, have a great uh, two weeks, and we'll see you next time.